I'm Karina Mitchell, and we're here at the Genesis Center downtown Gary on Broadway for the Gary Symphony Orchestra, our holiday season. <laughs> A strong force in this society is our founder and CEO. At this time, we will have a few words from the lovely lady as she comes to the podium, Mrs. Dolly Millender. I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight, and we're especially happy tonight because we're almost at our 30th year, which is next year. So put in your memory blank right now, 30 years next year, the first part of December, I'm going to go to the Genesis Center to the Christmas dinner concert, and it's going to be a very, very festival occasion. Those of you who came tonight don't know that you're coming in for a treat that most people don't get this time of the year with dinner with it and jazz. So after you have your Christmas concert, and then you get up here and you sing and have fun with your carols and everything, and then you sit down to eat dinner, delicious dinner, and then the jazz is playing, you'll say, well, I really had a different treat tonight that I know is no place else to be found. So we're very happy to have you here, and my big problem is I don't know when to stop talking. So. I'm going to be sure that I do stop talking this time so that we can go on with the concert. Thank you for coming and look forward to next year. We've got a lot of surprises for you next year and it's all I can do to keep from telling you about it. But anyway, follow us and we're going to give you a lot of treats next year. Thank you again for coming. Enjoy the concert. At this time, we will have greetings from the office of the mayor of the city of Gary, Mayor Karen Freeman Wilson, and those greetings will come from this is Chelsea Whittington and Jordan Freeman is here. Please come. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chelsea Whittington, Director of Communications for the City of Gary, and I am so glad to be able to turn the podium over to the city's first daughter, Ms. Jordan Wilson, who is going to bring greetings to us on behalf of our mayor who is currently traveling. But let me just tell you that Jordan is home on break from the illustrious Howard University. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm sorry, and my mother regrets that she can be here this evening, but uh, she just wants you to know that she does recognize the contribution that Mrs. Millender has had, as well as the Gary Historical and Cultural Society have made to this community. And the city is in the process of changing a partnership to pursue the support of the Legacy Foundation so, we that, so that we can develop and preserve the gateways to the community. I actually 
have a personal testimony of how this program has helped me uh, back in the day. I used to be a part of Saturday School down at Ambridge. So happy Kwanzaa from my family as well as the city of Gary on behalf of my mother. Everyone enjoy their holiday. Thank you so much. It is with great pride that we are supported by people like our mayor, our mayor's daughter, like the city of Gary, and the public relations and communications of the city of Gary. We appreciate that so much, and thank you so much. We want to introduce you at this time to the person that is the head of this grand symphony orchestra, the one that Every city doesn't have, but Gary, Indiana has one. A region might have one, like Northwest Indiana might have one, but a city of Gary, well, you can go to Chicago, you can go to New York, Los Angeles, but Gary, we're up there with those. We have our own symphony orchestra, and they are wonderful, and you will see in a minute. Yes, indeed. The director of this illustrious symphony is the dynamic Mr. Michael Carson. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy, and watch your neighbor and watch his eyes twinkle and his shoulders shake as the music reminds them of the good old days of Santa Claus.
Thank you. Wonderful. Did I tell you you feel like Christmas after that? <laughs> And at this time, we have the pleasure of being serenaded with a beautiful Christmas carol from the CEO of the Urban League of Northwest Indiana, and she can sing. It is Vanessa Allen.
Thank you, Ms. Vanessa Allen. Thank you so much. At this time in our program, we'd like to bring the young people in the audience up to the front to in join, in it, join with us. We're going to sing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I know you don't think there's much room, but we can find the space for you. How many, raise your hand if you're under 18 years of age. I please. <laughs> Well, we're going to sing Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer anyway. Anybody wants to come to the front and sing it with us? Feel free. I'm looking around to see who they are. There they are. I see one. Oh, there's some over there. Okay. Can you come right, right out front? This is not that many of you. Yeah, help them out. Thank you. Good, good. Right out front. Help them out. There we go. You going to stand by the microphone?
some members of the symphony orchestra that I'd like for you to get to know better, and the person that can introduce them to you and tell you more about them is Naomi Millender. At this time, please give a round of applause for Mr. Naomi Millender. Thank you, Dolores. And by the way, you all look beautiful in your reds and your, you, and your blacks and your whites and all that. You know, we're trying to do the same thing. But you look really, really great. And thank you. We know who the arts community is. We're looking at them. Give yourself a hand. Give yourself a hand. Uh, we have a lot of um, the members who are original members of Bell uh, for many, many years, of, um, the and uh, I've been with them many, many years too, so I might forget some and, of these people, but um, I've been with many, many years I'd like for people like Gloria Williams, but I'd like for people like Gloria Williams, stand up, Beverly Kamani, stand up, Jeanette Riggins, Andrea Killer, Jerome Pfeiffer, Bob Green, Vanessa, Vanessa Nichols. Nichols, I know it's uh, Marguerite Edwards, Edwards. Peter, Peter Cole, Cole, Judy Sandstrom. Told me to call him Art. Stand up, Art. And I did say Vanessa Nichols, didn't I? And our concert master. Uh, by the way, you know who the concert? You know what a concert master is, or where they sit? Okay. Why don't I, Why doesn't David Howard stand up for us? He is our concert master. Um, David, hit a, just hit a couple of little licks and let them know what it's supposed to sound like. Oh, wait a minute. There's Hilton Joseph. Hilton, please. I don't want to leave any other violas out. That's the, you know, they say that's the forgotten instrument. They're the, really, that is the instrument that you really need to listen to because they keep everything together. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Thank you for reminding me, Jeanette. David, hit a few licks and let them know what a, um, Concert master does. Of course, here, and if we had more opportunities and more things, that's why we've got those little envelopes on the table because we need some support. We can do a lot more with some support from you, uh, from your art, from the arts community. But David is over in Chicago. He works for the Royal Academy of London's testing program for violinists, so he's fantastic. And he lives right around the corner from Pulaski Junior High School. Oh, well, you know. Now, we have a lot of members in this orchestra. Um, we didn't bring all the people out, but we brought, we brought some more out. And we have some that haven't been with us from the very beginning, but they've been with us for five years, maybe 10 years or so. And I'd like for them to stand. Please stand, orchestra. Leah Larson, Fred Garcia. Um, where's Bob Griffin? You all see Bob on TV every Sunday at Apostolic, you know, he's the, he's the head trumpet 
player at uh, Reverend Brazier's church. And uh, we used to be in a group called Eight Bold Souls together, and I was able to travel with these seven men all over the world. <laughs> Loved it. Um, oh, I'm sorry, another one of our original members who's been with us from the very beginning is Mr. Ray Thomas. Ray. Hey, Ray, let them know what a trombone sounds like. And we have a couple of new brass players, kind of new. Uh, this, this young man, man Lance Dillon, Dillon was born and raised in Gary. His, his mother is in our orchestra. So we're going to talk, get to her later. This is Lance, our tuba player. And we have a Mr. Richard Watkins who's joined us. This is about his second or third year, and he loves playing with us, I was told. <laughs> and uh, she would like to hear a couple of low notes on that tuba. Lance, you got one. Yeah. Wow. Okay. okay. Come on, Lance. section and, and their, their name escapes me right now but would you gentlemen stand, stand up we love, love having them this is their second year with us and, and of course I had Lee Larson stand did I not okay, okay very, very good, good. Now, now we, we have, have some, some other newer players who have been with us for a lot for a few years and I think Otto have you been with us about eight years Otto Schultz Otto is and, and his mother run a, a agency or an arts group in uh, Hammond called the American Conservatory of Music. Where's Miss Theodora? Stand up. And they're they're great champions of of the arts, and they very very um, loyal. We can always count on them to come out. Um, we also, we also have another person who's been a friend of mine for many, many years. I won't say how many, because she probably won't want me to say. But she's one of the leading, and she plays double instruments. She plays the viola and the violin. Today she chose to come with us with the viola. And that's the inimitable Miss Dolores Diggs. And we have a new young lady with us, Lynette. Have a this, this is Lynette Neal. She's helping, helping us. This is about her second time to, to, to be with us, and she's helping us, and we're very happy to have her there. Um, we, we also have with us um, Aaron Zemelko, who he and his wife Alice Zemelko have been with us about, about seven years now. Have a seat. They were supposed to bring little Aaron, but he didn't, he didn't show up this time. Now, I'm going to, everybody keeps saying, what about Sandra Dillon? What about Sandra Dillon? What is so special about Sandra Sit down, Sandra Dillon. Um, Miss Marguerite Edwards is going to make a special presentation. Miss um, Marguerite. And, and by, by the way, way while she's doing, doing that, that, I'd like to introduce you to some of our youth members. members. They, they run through our organization. A lot of them start in our summer program or our Saturday school. We uh, have the free Saturday school for the arts. And we also have a summer enrichment for learning where we don't charge anything for the uh, classes. And it's a real struggle. But uh, we do that because we want to make sure that arts education is not so up there that 
the, the average, average child can't, can't get it. Remember, remember we're all given these gifts. gifts. Nobody special, special was given those gifts. gifts. But, but those, those that get a chance to develop, develop it, very often it's based on how much money you have. So we try to keep it free. And Jeremiah, come on up here. This is Jeremiah Carter. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Jeremiah. How y'all doing? My name is Jeremiah. I, got, uh, I attend Westside High School. And, um, well, I've been in music like, all my life. And, um, when I met Miss Dolly Miller, um, she introduced me to a whole new world of music. She taught me, like, things, how to read music and things like that. Not just picking up an instrument, not learning how to read. You know, that's the first step. And, um, um, basically, and then I came back this summer a few years later, and um, she let me teach the drum class. And the kids, they just fell in love with the class, and everybody wants to be in the drum class, just banging on stuff. But, but I taught them, you know, the visuals and things like that. And I didn't get a chance to really break it down for them to learn how to read, but I'm going to get to that next year, and I'm going to make sure all of my students know how to read music. So. has a student, at least two students that are in the violin section. K Rob, I just wanted to. Um, is Kyrie here yet? Kyrie, come on up, Kyrie. And K Rob has another young lady. I don't know her name, but she's a new young lady. And would she stand up, please? A student, give her a hand. She's, she's still in high school. Uh, uh, this, this young lady, lady I think you started, started with us for about seven, seven or something like that. She, she was eight. eight. She, she remembers. Okay, I want to say a few words. Uh, my name is Kari Coker. Um, I've been in this program since I was eight. Um, I volunteer every summer and teach the kids. That's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, what are you doing right now? I mean, where, where did you come from? from? I came from Fort Wayne. I, I go to Ivy Tech Fort Wayne right now and majoring in business. Um, she's another one of the young people that teaches in the program. She's excellent with the children, especially the little girls. They just love her and they love their little instrument. And I think some of the little boys seem to like her too, so, for some reason. And you met the young, the young lady over there. Uh, I have to tell you this real quick about Jeremiah. Jeremiah, can I tell this story about you? Come here, come here. Uh, this past summer, Jeremiah was on his way to being 15. His mother brought him out to the program, and it was the registration. And I said, oh, him, you know. Oh, right, because the program goes up to age 14. Well, he was still 14, right? But, oh, he had turned 15, okay. But she wanted him back in, you know. So um, I asked him, do you think you could help the drum teachers? And he said, yes. I want you to know that all of that changed overnight. He came in as a drum instructor assistant, and he was fantastic. His whole demeanor had changed. Just give him a hand just for that. It was beautiful. Thank you very much. And now... Sandra Joe, they keep mentioning your name for some reason. I guess maybe we better get to the special presentation. Thank you. Um, every organization has to have some special people that you rely on to do the things that nobody else is doing. And Sandra Dillon is one of those people. We had rehearsed at Roosevelt, I'm not from Vera, so that's the way I say it. Uh, for many years, and you get so you go in that room and everything is there. You didn't have to, you didn't have to look for stands, you didn't have to look for chairs, you didn't even have to look for the restroom, it's all there. And uh, everything was just so easy to do. So that many of us, the neophytes who came in, like some of these young ladies and gentlemen, She's just mentioned. We're right at home with the and the students would come through. They would say sing a tune or two and keep going. They weren't disruptive or anything. 
And, and Sandra just had a knack of letting those children be children, but growing up in various talents. And then I heard her telling us uh, one day how in the spring, she would take a bus load of those kids to different colleges, get them enrolled, get them scholarships, and she mentioned one young lady who was going to have a fun night, and so she didn't want to go. I said, well, sure, her mother didn't stand for that. She said she didn't go. So often children miss opportunities because the home is not really pressing things. And then they say, well, what's wrong with the schools? There's nothing wrong with the schools. People just have to do things. Which, which brings, brings us, us to another, another one. Uh, I can get off Sandra for a minute. There is a young man over there that, that, that is just unbelievable. unbelievable. K. Rob Jackson. Jackson. All, All of us need refreshers when we come to be in the orchestra. orchestra. And, and I've always thanked God that they, they offered us a string clinic, because, because if they had said audition, I still wouldn't be in it, but the string clinic I can handle. And K. Rob comes in, and others too, um, you can pick anyone in that orchestra, will help people when they're trying to learn. And it just makes it nice and pleasant and enjoyable. And like they were saying at the beginning, Gary is one of the few cities that has its own symphony. Do you understand what that means? And then you heard it. Now, we're not just shucking and jiving. We can really play. <laughs> so I, I think there are some rewards, certificates and things that go along with this uh, little portion of the program. But I don't know when you would get it. You have to. <laughs> You, you will get it, get it though. So, so if the audience would just give our, our ones we've highlighted, highlighted and, and the ones we haven't highlighted, because all, all of them make, make this work. work. If, if you, you just give, give us a big applause while I take my seat. Will the members of the Screen Clinic please stand? These are members of the, of the String Clinic. Now, what is that all about? Remember, we're very community focused, and we're always thinking of ways to, to do this. These are people that maybe years ago would pick up an instrument, a violin, and they maybe haven't played it for a while. Okay? So what should we say? Just buy a ticket and come and enjoy it? Well, if you'd like to be in the String Clinic, we have special lessons, and we have special um, opportunities for you to learn. And the person that runs that is that young man right there. Stand up, K-Rob. K. Rob is a graduate of Emerson uh, School for the Visual and Performing Arts. And I remember I met him when he was about 14 or 15, but they tell me that he may have been coming to our children's concerts. We have those every year. We've had them for 28 years. And there's as many as maybe 1,200 uh, children in the Gary schools hear the orchestra every year. And K. Rob, and they're only in the fourth and fifth grade, and I think K. Rob said he remembers way back. Um, and he, he, he picked up the cello, which, which is my instrument. So when I found out how good he was, you know, we, I used to take him over to Chicago to play these different messiahs at Christmas. He's fantastic. And then he broke my heart. He told me he was going to viola. He was about a junior or senior. I love the violas, don't get me wrong. But he changed over to the viola. And then in college, he went off and got into the violin, so the boy can play. Okay, Rob, play something real quick. No? Okay. All right, we have uh, special commendations for all of them, uh, for K. Rob, and I have two special people that you've got to know, and I'm gonna sit down. And this summer, we have a summer program for children, as you know, and two people came out and helped us the entire summer and didn't ask for one dime. And one of those is Mr. Robert Green. came out and talked flute, and even 
uh, lent us some, some little flutes for the children to, to play. It was fantastic. And the other one is Mr. Michael Carson. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much, Ms. Naomi Millender. When um, Dolly Millender was at the microphone, the first thing she said is, one problem I have is I talk too much. But uh, her daughter has inherited it. <laughs> No, but everything she had to say was informative and interesting, but the food is waiting and we're scared we're going to get it cold. But we want to make sure we get to go on the sleigh ride before the food comes, and we want to make sure that we get to sing in our chorus before the food comes. So we're running real kind of fast, and um, right now we're going to go on a sleigh ride. Okay, Miss Matt, it's your turn. 
We need you to gather up all the singers. We're going to come in the front and we're going to do the hallelujah chorus and get our throats ready for this beautiful meal we're about to have. Everybody that can sing any kind of thing, please come to the front right there so we can do the Christmas carol sing-along and end it with the hallelujah. Mark the Herald Angels sing. Next one I know we all know, Silent Night.
those, high notes. All right, angels from the realms of glory.
Oh, that's a good feeling. If you didn't join us, you need to join us next year. That is a beautiful feeling. Let's give our singers a round of applause. Thank you. At this time, we will have our dinner invocation. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm sorry. I would like a nice round of applause for the orchestra, ladies and gentlemen. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. How about taking a bow? Most definitely. Thank you. Dynamic Gary Symphony Orchestra. Thank you so much for your talent and your cultural enhancement. Thank you. Invocation. Elder Isaac E. President Jr. will give us our invocation and we can enjoy the delicious food they have prepared for us. Thank you and continue to enjoy yourselves. I was wondering if anybody in the house know how to do CPR after singing, after singing with that choir. <laughs> Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for all your tender mercy, name, love, and kindness. Lord, we thank you for another year that you allowed us to be here. You've been so good to us, and we thank you and give you the praise. We ask that you would bless this historical society, bless this orchestra, bless the founder, the leaders. Lord, bless our president of these United States, bless the mayor. Lord, bless the city of Gary. Now, Lord, bless this food, bless the one that prepared it. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Amen. I'm Karina Mitchell, and I've been given this opportunity to interview one of my counterparts with the orchestra, yes. with the Gary Symphony Orchestra, and I'm with Bob Griffin. Hello, Bob. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. You were here tonight for this holiday festivity symphony concert, yes. which is the, understand, the 29th year? 29th year, and I've been here 25 of those 29 years. What was it like in the beginning? It's very much the same, but it's, it's always been a highly spirited orchestra and very, very talented people all, over the years. We've all grown up together. Have you all traveled anywhere with the orchestra? Uh, not, not really, mainly in, in the Gary area. Okay, mm. okay. And we, where are you from? I'm from Chicago. I'm living in Homewood right now. Oh, good. But, good. I, but I do commute. How did you find out about the orchestra then? Well, actually, I used to play with Naomi in a jazz group, uh -huh. and we have a group, Eight Bold Souls. We've been together for over 20 years. So we traveled around the world in that orchestra. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Well, Bob, thanks so much for giving us some insight on the Gary uh, Symphony Orchestra and hope that you will have 25 more years. Oh, thank you very much. It's an honor and a blessing to be here. Thank you. Now, I'm with the Gary Symphony Orchestra, and we have a dynamic musician here by the name of Art Hoyle. Hello, Art. Hello there. <laughs> I am so thrilled to have you here in Gary playing with the Gary Symphony Orchestra. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. How long have you been playing with this orchestra? I haven't counted, but it's oh, eight, nine, ten years, something like that. Oh, good, good, good. So you were introduced, they, well, no one needs to introduce you. How did they get you to come over here to play with them? Naomi called and asked, asked me if I would do it, and uh, when I wasn't working, I was glad to do it. Oh, that is so wonderful. You, where are you from? Well, I've been in Gary for 70 years, but I... I was born in Oklahoma, born in Mississippi, grew up in Oklahoma. Oh, okay. okay. Came to Gary when I was 13. Look, listen, I hear them say your name on time on WNUA. I see. Right, and I love it. I love it. I love your, I love your music. Uh, you're a fabulous musician, jazz artist. You have developed a name for yourself throughout the entire world. Have you traveled like most musicians overseas? Many times, yes. Which one do you like? Which country would you, do you like? If I had a lot of money, I'd live in Switzerland. Why Switzerland? I just loved it. It's beautiful. The people were warm and receptive, and they loved the music, because they love the music all over Europe. Right. Even more of the United States nowadays. Right, so right, right, my, right. I've been going to Europe since 1957, when I was in Lionel Hampton's band, and we did 16 weeks in, all over Europe, and uh, as well as North Africa. And it was a wonderful experience. The music was very, all the concerts were sold out. The people loved the music. In Japan, the same thing. Now, North Africa, are you talking like Egypt, Morocco? No, no, Algeria. Oh, we were in, okay, okay. We were in Algiers and in Oran. Right, and they were very receptive to jazz music. Very much so. Wow. 
Well, of course, that's the history. That's where the music comes from. <laughs> <laughs> that's where jazz comes from here. <laughs> jazz was born in America. Oh, okay. So I'm wrong about that. But what I was speaking of is the drums and all the rest of that well, ancient history. The, ryth the rhythms came from Africa. Right. The harmonic structure came from European music. Okay. Wow. Well, I am so pleased to be talking with you tonight on this Christmas uh, festivity for the Gary Symphony Orchestra and hopefully you will be with this orchestra for many more years. I'm hoping so too. Thank you so much. Nice talking with you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Dr. Vanessa Nichols, the co-drummer in the set. Thank you. <laughs> She's in the house for the Christmas orchestra. What what part does the drummer play in an orchestra? It keeps the whole beat. If I'm off, everybody's off. <laughs> So I had to keep the rhythm and the beat and kind of set the pace for how everything's going to go. When did you start playing drums? Um, I started um, maybe in middle school. Okay. Right, yeah, my sixth grade. You're from here, Gary? I am from here. Uh, I was taught by the legendary Tillman Bugs. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's a producer, everything, teacher, great, great um, musician. When did you decide that you wanted this as your career? Uh, I don't know, early on, middle school. Oh. Drums is what I wanted to do. Yeah. Have you played in a uh, band, like a soul band or anything like that? No, I just play, play around. Whomever calls me and wants me to play, I play. Oh, okay. That's real hot. That's hot. So what do you, what do you think about this orchestra? Uh, well, it's a wonderful thing for the city of Gary. I mean, like they say, how many cities have an orchestra? So it's a great thing. Hey, we can pick, we can compete with the uh, Chicago Symphony. Hey, bring it on, Gary Symphony Orchestra. And you know, to me, I grew up in the orchestra. Okay. I started in East Chicago. Okay. Where I lived, and we started in the fourth grade. Oh. And so from the fourth to the sixth grade, we had orchestra. I came to, the orchestra was huge in East Chicago. Everybody loved it. Everybody wanted to be in the orchestra. When I came to Gary, there was no orchestra. There was just a few instruments. A band was hot. We had uh, Willie Horn right. and Mr. Redfield. Yeah. I remember them. <laughs> and Mr. Redfield was gracious enough to keep the orchestra going Yes. in junior high school. So I really appreciate that. Then I went on to Roosevelt, and I kept the orchestra. I kept playing orchestra. Yes. Because it was an easy A for me. Yes, because you were already an expert. I mean, and the main main component, which everyone doesn't understand, is learning to read. Right. It's imperative that the young generation learn to read. Well, they're missing out because right now all they are all they are into are beats. Right. But, but you can't get a job if you don't read. You can't play with the Gary Symphony Orchestra if you can't read. Right, right. So the new kids that are coming up, we're going to teach them to read. Well, they can just start with the summer program. Yes. And uh, then they'll be able to uh, develop their skills and move on into the orchestra like the rest of us. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Karina Mitchell, and I'm representing the Gary Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> Headed by our maestro, Mike Carson. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hi. Hey, Mike. I'm a, I'm a little nervous. I know, but you're a great, you're a great band leader, orchestra, <laughs> conductor. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being so kind. <laughs> right. You, you, know, you did a wonderful job on the strings today. Oh, thank you so much. And Beautiful. I really, I like your hair because no, no, <laughs> maestros are really, <laughs> they love to shake the hair. Yeah. And that's all part of you have to watch that as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So with these dreads, I'm like, wow. Dreads work. Good, good. They help help keep time. Right. They help us keep some time. <laughs> get a couple of things going. Get it. Yeah, they help so what a little bit. So what do you think about this evening tonight? Oh, it's a lovely evening. A beautiful turnout. Really mm -hmm. nice. I see a lot of uh, a lot of prominent people and a lot of just uh, everyone's prominent. But uh, it's so nice to turn out. I like to see people coming out for orchestra and, and dressing and right. You know, like in kind of formal. Attire. I like that kind of idea. And, and coming to see live music, because you know live music is always the best. Yes, it is. Live jazz, live uh, live rock, I'll live go, classical music, all of live music, live folk, right. live soul, R&B. Right. Live right. music is best. 
Yes, it is. Although I was in the orchestra playing, I still enjoyed listening to all of my counterparts. I oh, can yeah. hear all the, all the different parts surrounding me. I can hear the horns on the back of me. I can hear the first violins right in front of me. I can hear the violas. So I was just in tune with all of it, enjoying it so much. Good, that's good. And the feel, and, and, and the feel that yeah, that you're part of something and and uh, to, to feel your part fits in. Yeah, I mean, that's great. It's a great feeling to be making music with, with somebody and, and uh, what, what, to be making music with a group of people. You're also the band teacher. You're also yeah. the band teacher at Roosevelt. No, no, not this year. I'm at a Banneker this year. Oh, really? Banneker. Okay. Okay, uh, well, Banneker. they have an excellent teacher. Um, <laughs> really? You're kind. You're, no, you're someone. You're a kind woman. <laughs> for real. You're some, you know what? People look up to the band teacher. We always did. Yeah. Oh, band is a little bit different. Was than more like a counselor. <laughs> oh, band is a little bit different than it was uh, when we were back in the day. It's a little bit different, but it's. Uh, I got some pretty good students. I got some good band students, and I, I, we're having a concert on the 19th of December. So but they're looking forward to it. Oh, I got a beginning band. Yeah. Oh, good. And that's always good to work with a beginning band. <laughs> right, and I love that because we need you. And they will always, I believe you, they will always so remember you like I always remember the teachers that I came with. Who was your band teacher? My, uh, or your orchestra teacher? Uh, Willie Redfield. Okay. And, and then, then Willie was that? Horn. Willie Horn. Oh, that's a great teacher. Yeah. Willie Horn's a great teacher, man. Right. You want that Tolleston band? <laughs> Whoa, that was like a... How many kids you had that 400 or something like that? Yeah, I wasn't in the band. Huge band. Unfortunately, I wasn't in the band. I was in the orchestra. Okay, they had an orchestra there, too. Right. How many but kids you had that orchestra? band did come in with the orchestra. Yeah, and that must, at, at, at Tallison, that must have been a huge program. That was a huge program. Yeah, well. That's when you got it out. That was a different day. But I we was need saying, to bring that. We need to go back to that. Right, but I was saying that just to say that we really looked up to our teachers, so. Yeah. Well, those are good teachers right. to look up to. Mr. Horn was a great band director. He used to be the principal of uh, Emerson. Right. Oh, great man. Great, great band director. Right, right. Yeah, great orchestra director. Play in some other, I see you in some other bands too, jazz bands. Around yeah, do, I do uh, some jazz things. We're doing a thing, a uh, jazz thing every Tuesday at the uh, Elbow Room. Okay. From about 8 to 10. And then I work with the band together, the big band together. So. Okay. All right. Well, music is well and live in Gary, Indiana. Live and music. Right, right. I like that. <laughs> so always support us when you hear about it. Come out and enjoy it as well. well. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. And thanks for playing. You're wonderful playing tonight. Well, thank you. Happy holidays, We have another guest, Laura Foley. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too. Yes. yes. How did you enjoy the festivities tonight? Oh, I love the uh, concert here. Yes. It's always lovely. Is your first time here? Uh, I believe I've been doing this about 22 or 3 years. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I missed that one. <laughs> and your instrument is? String bass. Oh, I love that. Because you know the violin and the bass are the same, have the same strings. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> yes. I always said that I was, if I was to switch over to an instrument, it would be the bass. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there's mm -hmm. something special about a woman who handles that bass. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you keep the rhythm of the... Uh, right, right, right. Keep the, um, I'm with the rhythm section. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. right, right. Keep the pulse. Right, Hold right. the Hold down the bottom. <laughs> Right. So um, we're going to wrap this up on this part, and I'd like to thank you so much. Uh, you're a great musician, and hopefully you'll be here another 25 years. Well, I sure hope so. Yes. yes thank you. Yes, thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you. We have Gary Indiana's renowned vocalist, Dwayne Coleman. How are you? Hello. Dwayne is a gospel singer, uh, minister. Yep. Right. Yep. Right here in the community. You're here to enjoy this festivity tonight. What do you think about an orchestra? It's awesome that our city has an orchestra. Yes. I actually had the uh, privilege, I believe, in 2005 to, to uh, do this particular occasion and sing Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire with them. Yeah. They should have you back again because <laughs> I know you have a, such a beautiful, soothing voice. Well, thank God for that. Yes. Thank God for that. Yeah. Yes. And you were invited by? I was invited by uh, Mark Spencer. Uh, we were here representing the West Side Theater Guild. Um, the, we, we've got the play going on, How a Grouch Stole Gospel. And uh, that's going on on the 14th and the 15th of this week. And um, the starting time is 7 o'clock. Doors open at 6 o'clock. Uh, it's featuring Reverend Ferris Evans, Jr., 
and Reverend Sion Roberts Sr. and um, Walt Whitman and the Soul Children of Chicago wow. and 2103 and Excellent. just to name a few. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's, that's, that's the type of talent you get here in Gary, Indiana. You can go to the theater or you can come to the orchestra or you can do so many things right here in our community or tune into my TV show based beauty, art, style, and entertainment. Right. Or just be with Naomi who Millinder, Mrs. Dolly Millinder, yes. who uh, had all of this. They, this is their dream. This is their baby. This is their the, everything, really. They eat, drink, and breathe this orchestra. And I would like to commend them because without them, there would be no orchestra. It brings a great sense of culture to our community, a community that's been looked down upon historically. But when we see things like this, we see culture. Yep. All right. Thank you so much, Dwayne. Yep. Happy You're holidays. Welcome. Happy holidays to you. Right, thank you. I'm with Otto Schultz and Theodora Schultz. Otto plays violin. His mom here plays the oboe, right? Yes. Oh, my goodness. This is just total culture in here. Yes. The house tonight right here at the Genesis Center, downtown Gary yes. on Broadway. Uh, we're all dressed in tux and tails. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> right. We right. come out to really show out and show up and show out right yeah. here at the Genesis Center. That's correct. What do you think about this great festivity tonight? Well, I think that it's important for the city of Gary to have education and music and culture. Yes. And this is what is necessary for our young people. Right. And that's what the Millinders do, and that's really great. I say and, uh, the Millinders have done a beautiful, beautiful job, and they should be supported should because if they, because the work they have done, they have impacted so many young people that if they had not done so, I think Gary would have been the loser. But they have done so, such a wonderful job that Gary is much, much better than it ever was because of what they did, and they really deserve a great amount of support yes yes where are you from i am the president of the american conservatory of music i'm originally well we we lived in new york city and did all of our musical work there and we came back here to chicago to help the american conservatory and to uh, make uh, have it establish it so that it's more strong than it was before yeah said from a professional to professionals we really appreciate you being a part of this orchestra and uh, the orchestra shall live on with beautiful faces like you <laughs> thank you very right. much and happy holiday oh merry christmas to you merry christmas this is the reason for the season that's right <laughs> amen amen <laughs> thank you so thank much thank you okay right. bye bye i'm with dolores kelway gibson the host for the beautiful host for the evening. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. This has been a wonderful event, and I'm just so happy for the Gary Historical and Cultural Society. You've been hosting for quite some time now, haven't you? Yes, I have. I haven't counted the years, but it's been a long time. <laughs> yes. I'm also on the advisory board of the uh, Historical Society. Right. What's going on with the Historical Society? Ooh. We can't talk about everything, but some real good things are coming in, into play for us. We've been asking for funds for projects, and, and we're, we're moving coming along. Hopefully, wow. hopefully people are going to be donating, and we're going to oh, be able to move along. Yeah. Well, we need smart minds like you and the Millinders to put together what we should have in this community. And what about this evening? Isn't it fantastic? It is. It's glorious. It's cultural. It's just... Christmassy and it's just beautiful. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And it's really good talking with you, and you have a great holiday. Thank you. You do the same. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jerome Pfeiffer, the oboe. Oboist, that is Oboist. correct. Yes. yes. <laughs> Player of the orchestra. Yes. The wind section. That is correct. <laughs> wow. So, how have you enjoyed being a part of this orchestra? Oh, it has been a very positive part of my life. I've been a musician for over 50 years, but being a part of the musical scene here in Gary has been one of the highlights of my life. I enjoy it too. I, 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 I really miss what I used to have, and so that's why I'm back here, because I've always been a part of the orchestra, 
and as I was going to get the outfits that we needed to have for this occasion, I, I reflected back in my high school years when I would always have to buy something new to wear for <laughs> So it gives me an opportunity to buy something new to wear. Yes, indeed. I feel a similar way. Right, you're dressed so beautiful tonight. Oh, you're so very kind. Yes. But this is a special affair that the Historical Society supports each year. And it gives the people in the community a chance to come together in the spirit of Christmas. Yes. In the, in the spirit of enjoying brotherhood and giving back peace and happiness to everyone. Oh, that is so well said. Well said, sir. And hopefully you'll have 25 more years with the orchestra. I'm going to try. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thanks so much. Thank so you much. very much. All right. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. I'm here with David Howard. He sits in the first chair, first violin, a master of, what do they call him nowadays? Uh, violin, violin no, 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 is no, 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 no. concert master. Concert, concert master. Concert. Okay, let me try it again. David Howard. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm here with David Howard, a concert master, first chair. I admire you. Sir. Thank you very much. I Thank really you. do. Your, your, the sound of your violin, you have a beautiful violin. Beautiful violin, by the way. Thank you. I can hear the tone of your violin when you're playing. A lot of people don't notice those things, but I do. Well, uh, violins are very individual. Um, usually the age of a violin enhances the sound. These days, uh, they've come up with ways of making modern violins that come very close to the classic violins. Everybody knows about Stradivari violins and Guarneri, Amati. My instrument is modern. It was made by a maker in New York from China. Uh, they have an, an entire city in China that's devoted to nothing but making violins. So they're coming close, coming very close, yes. So is it the wood, as the wood ages, gives it a better sound? Exactly, very good. Um, there are different uh, methods, and um, some methods aren't even known for sure. For instance, we don't know exactly how Stradivari got the wood to uh, respond the way it does. Uh, we don't know what he did, how, how he put his varnish on the instruments. Um, another thing about violin making is you don't really know how good the violin is until maybe 50 years. It's got to hold together. Uh, the seams, the part where the wood comes together with the ribs has to hold together well. Uh, it can't fall apart or it can't warp or anything like that. So, plus it has to, it has to improve in sound, which usually happens. Um, usually uh, maple wood, uh, they found some forests in, uh, in Michigan that give a very high quality wood. It's very similar to what was found in Italy for many of the great violins. So sometimes you get lucky, you know, uh, with a less expensive instrument that sound has a very good sound to it. Only a concert master could give you all that in <laughs> education. Wow. And we appreciate it so well. Uh, I'm so happy that you are the lead, one of the leader, fine leaders in the orchestra, someone that I can look up to, and I would just like, do you have any final words you'd like to say? Uh, we have, we have uh, great talent here in Gary, in Gary proper. We really don't have to go outside of Gary. And we've had great talent for years. Um, we are, let's say that um, uh, you can't really stymie pros progress uh, for too long. Uh, let's hope that we are instilling in enough young people um, enough pride, uh, enough for giving them enough information so that they, they can realize that um, we've had a very um, treasure house of talent here for quite a while. Good. Well, happy holidays to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you. I'm Karina Mitchell, and we're here with the youngest member of the orchestra, and your name is? Jeremiah Carter. And you, what instrument do you play, young man? Well, I play various of instruments, but um, in the orchestra I play percussion and um, 
snare drum, and um, several others, and the xylophone. Interesting, interesting. Now, so many young men like yourself are not playing instruments nowadays. What made you, you have that interest? Well, what made me have that interest was that um, I love music, and um, this is a part of my life, and I make the best of it. And um, like I use it to the best of my ability, and I know what I can do with it, and it'll take me somewhere. And Ms. Miller had taught me that over the years I've been in this program. Excellent, excellent. Well, we'd like to see you. Uh, you may be the last man standing or the last man to develop the new orchestra because of your youth. <laughs> so just don't give up on the orchestra and keep on moving and doing what you're doing. I like what you're talking about. I'm sure you're going to go on, get a degree in it, and become the musician. Quincy Jones, producer. Uh, there's so many great producers out there that you, that you can follow and mm. become. Yeah, like more like because my cousin, he like, a musician. He knows famous musicians, things like that, and the jazz and things like that. Okay. I don't know if you probably heard of Bruce Evans. Right, Bruce yeah. is. Okay, yeah, yeah. And, the, and the Billy Foster trio right. and things like that. Right. Because Billy Foster was giving me piano lessons a while back. And, okay. You know. Okay, so you are on the right track. Yes. <laughs> mm. I know Billy quite well. Well, congratulations to you, young man, and happy holidays to you. Happy holidays to you, too. Happy holidays to everybody out there. Thank you. Here with the founders of the Gary Symphony Orchestra, also the Gary Cultural Society, Historical Society, Dolly Millinder and Naomi Millinder, mother and daughter. Hello. Glad to be here. Yes. This is the brainchild of the two of you. This is your dream. This is what you guys have been working for all of your lives. Well, this and the other part. We have historical and cultural part. Who started, whose idea was it to create the Gary Symphony Orchestra? It's a long story, real. The, the other symphony that was here, well, there was a void here in Gary. And we had a lot of people who studied music at all the various high schools, and they had no place to play. So we, uh, Naomi got a small group together, and we went to Mayor Hatcher and asked him for money to start our own symphony, and that's what we did. The first concert was in this new building right here in Genesis Center 29 years ago. Awesome, awesome. And Naomi, now that it's 29 years later, <laughs> What can you say about this orchestra? Well, I'm very proud to be a member of the Gary Civic Symphony and its manager. We have people that come out and play with us every year. We just had a man that came from a, a town way back, way, way down the road there. And he told our conductor, he said, I want to play. He said, I want to get to the heart of Gary. Obviously, he's not from Gary, and he's not uh, African-American. He's a uh, Afri uh, Caucasian gentleman. He's a fabulous musician, and I love what he said to me tonight. He said, I want to get to the heart. I want to get to the heart of the people. Isn't that beautiful? But we have all kinds, all kinds of ages. We have that young man over there. I was hoping he would maybe get a chance to interview him. That was Jeremiah. He's only 15, and already he's been the teacher in our free summer program that we have for children. He's an assistant drum instructor. Uh, he was in our program from the age of eight on, and when he got too old, his mother said, I want him involved some way, and that's how he stayed involved. But the symphony uh, members are, fab are fabulous people. They're very dedicated. They're very community-oriented, which is the way we want. We don't want to be stuffed shirt like they think symphonies are supposed to be. That's not what they are. We're truly community, you know, and we're always looking for ways to be a part of our community. So what would you tell the public and the people? What would you like for them to do with the orchestra? Do you need their support? Yes, we need a lot of support. We're starting a women's symphony. Yeah, we're, look, we're needing, um, we have a women's support group that we've just started. Uh, we would like to have a season uh, with at least three uh, concerts. Right now, we just have two and a few little small things. Um, but we want to add maybe two more to it. And we want to bring in a big star next year. And we need a lot of help with that. Yeah. Wow, well that's awesome. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to dream, plan, and execute. And with the support of the people, we can do that right here in our community. And once again, this is a great evening. The Gary Symphony Orchestra right here at the Genesis Center with our jazz band. We have the name of the jazz band tonight? 
the Ron Pickett Dinner Jazz Ensemble. Right. Let me add one final comment. I, yes. I really need people to know that our current mayor, just as the ones before, are very much in our corner. So we will have a fabulous celebration next year. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Can we talk to that young man right over there? That's a, is, sure. Is he and may I leave? Let's close this out and say oh, I'll oh, get him. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, just want to wish the people a happy holiday. Happy holidays. God bless you, and thank you for the support that you've given us. We had a beautiful audience here tonight. Uh, I call it the arts community. Just about every seat was filled. We weren't sure about that, were we? Yeah, we had a few. I don't think we really had that many empty. I had to go find me a seat. I said, you better find me a seat because that food is good. Oh, it was excellent. The food was real. It was excellent tonight. Yes, well, thank you very much for interviewing us, and may, may this get us some supporters. All right. Thank you. We come to the closing of the show. I'm Karina Mitchell. I was one of the violin players in the orchestra. This is the Gary Symphony Orchestra yearly Christmas concert headed by Naomi Millinder and also the Gary Historical Society. We had great musicians this evening, and I just want to say happy holidays to everyone and good night. Thank you.